Season 9 of Drake's Migration Nation is powered by Hydra Trek. Powerful, rugged, amphibious vehicles. Coming up this week on Drake's Migration Nation. Perfect. Wearing them out. We're gonna we're gonna get into them pretty good today. Oh, I'm shaking like crazy. <laughs> Full contact duck club is like peanut M&Ms. You can't get enough of it. So we're back. Migration Nation is powered by Hydra Trek. Last week, regional host Todd Copley and good friend and Drake field expert Scott Van Blaircombe migrated south to hunt with Hydra Trek's Craig Simonton and Mike Scott in Arkansas. This week, we're going to try to finish up Todd's hunt and get him home before he becomes an Arkansas resident. There's so much fun here at Full Contact that you just can't squeeze it into one episode. So Kyle was gracious enough to say, hey, why don't you guys stick around a little bit? So, uh, duh, yeah, we did. We picked right back up here at Etowah where we left off at. Same guys. Same food, same ducks, and same blind. And we're back at it again. Could not wait to get back out there because everything was lining up to be an epic hunt. We had the wind in our favor. Everything was lining up to be just right. Day two here at Full Contact. We got a little bit of snow coming in this morning. Uh, we probably got a two hour window before we get some snow. And they're calling for an inch of snow. Uh, you know, by mid-afternoon, so we're excited. We already got ducks flying in the air. Everything is froze in the area, but we got the pump going, water boiling in front of the blind. We got our hydro tracks packed down with all kinds of gear. Uh, we got seven shooters today. We're looking to kill a bunch of ducks. a little bit of ice. There's a lot of ice down here. We busted probably inch ice coming out. And he's knocking some of the skirts off the decoys now. And we've had gadwalls try and get in when we we're getting unloaded from the hydro tracks. So it's going to be a really good morning. Late start. That's kind of cool. But something I'm not used to as a duck hunter, but we're pretty confident there's enough ducks around here that it's still going to take just a little bit of time to do what we have to do. So we're going to get on them. Bird should be moving around here out of the corn a little bit. Today, we're looking for a good wind shift for us. Uh, been battling a little bit of wind coming in from behind the, behind us. Ducks really having to work hard coming in from the backside. Today, we got a good shift in wind. Man, it really looks like it's gonna be a great day. We should have birds in our face. Uh, we're really excited about today. Temperatures are just perfect, conditions are right. We've got open water. Man, we're really excited about today's hunt. Kill it, Wear him out. He's gone. Right. The skunk, she's gone. We finally got one to come in here. Uh, I think we were all pretty antsy to shoot because he was out <laughs> First shot. 60 yards. Hey, we loaded him though. Yeah, we loaded he, he got him. a lot of steel. He's not going anywhere. Good job. I'm glad somebody stepped up to the plate. Nice. Nice shooting. To keep up with all the hunting action, check us out on the web. 
Season 9 of Drake's Migration Nation is powered by Hydra Trek. Powerful, rugged, amphibious vehicles. Rio Ammunition. Share the experience. Higdon Outdoors. Get real. Boss Drives. Take charge. Realtree. Family, friends, and the outdoors. And by Drake Waterfowl Systems. Innovators in waterfowl hunting. Bill Freeman is the owner of Full Contact Duck Club, and he couldn't be here for this hunt, but he was happy for y'all to come and enjoy the place just like he always is for friends and family, and and uh, he has it for for everybody to enjoy. Killing. Nice shot on the gadwall up there. Wow. Nice shot. All right, that's good though. <clears throat> nice shot on the gadwall. Man, that bird was up there. Nice shot. Uh, Mr. Freeman is very generous with, and, and that's what Full Contact Duck Club is for, is for friends and family to get together and enjoy each other's company and, and just have a good time to, to get away from, from being busy with life. We, we need the weather to do something. We got a little bit of wind, but not enough. It looks like it wants to snow, but it got blue skies trying to pop out. So Mother Nature is back at it, trying to throw as many curveballs to the duck season as she possibly can, and swinging a miss. Had it here. Trying, we'll peck away at it. It's early, we've only been here a couple hours. You know, uh, as the hunt is going on today, we're chipping away at a limit. We're we're knocking it down. Pegs are falling, dominoes are dropping. We're 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 chipping away. And back behind us, where we're at, you know, there's there's a big big chunk of flooded corn, and we know there's ducks in there because the birds that we're chipping away at are coming from that corn. And then, for lack of better words, hell breaks loose. And the Mondo ginormous pterodactyl Godzilla flock of ducks comes over. It's stupid with ducks. And you know, the the hard thing to do wow. is to not shoot into this bunch of ducks. There's thousands of of, of ducks in the air. And it's not just mallards. I mean, there's mallards, pintails, gadwalls, widgeons, uh, pterodactyls, kitchen sinks, and a question mark. There's everything that quacks in the air. And you know, every you, you want to shoot. You want They're in your face. We have ducks at 10 feet, 10 yards, and at 20 yards. Lots of them. Lots and lots. Eat them up range. But uh, the best thing to do is to not shoot into that. By doing so. Yeah, you know, we're chipping away. We're knocking down a few birds. You get a chance of crippling a whole bunch. You don't want to do that, obviously. But the worst thing about it, you don't want to educate all those ducks. They have they they start getting shot at in September in Canada. This is January in Arkansas. These ducks have PhDs. They are master's degree geniuses. They are the Einsteins of the water, waterfowl world. Uh, they don't need to be any smarter. And besides the fact that we would educate a whole lot of ducks where we're hunting at here at Full Contact. But like I said, you know, Kyle and, and Mr. Freeman, what they do just doesn't benefit us. It benefits everybody that hunts these ducks around. If we educate them for us, we educate them for everybody. And, you know, there's no sense in doing that. Man, that is like the Mondo King Kong flock of ducks. Yeah, it'd have been cool picking up 10 or 15, but it was even cooler to watch 10,000 fly away. <laughs> Todd, let me see your hand. Oh, I'm shaking like crazy. <laughs> oh, I can't. I've never seen so many ducks. It's uh, it's crazy in one bunch. There's birds just everywhere you look, turn and spin in each direction. There was just ducks everywhere. It was unbelievable. It was a trip of a lifetime to see all them birds. It's unbelievable. They have a wonderful place here for conservation. 
tons of corn, tons of feed. These ducks can sit here all winter and stay here and enjoy it for spring. It's awesome. To keep up with all the hunting action, check us out on the web. Season 9 of Drake's Migration Nation is powered by Hydra Trek. Powerful, rugged, amphibious vehicles. <laughs> Our main management practice would, would be the, the water and we've got different water control structures where we can drain, pump, stop. We can let water in if the floodway is up. And uh, we also plant designated food plots. Corn seems to work great, number one, because they eat it, but I also think that they rest in it. They feel comfortable uh, just roosting in it. Uh, they can, can hide in it. And they, they get lots of good carbs from it. And they seem to eat it more the colder it gets later in the season. Man, that was a lot of work for just a duck. <laughs> that was awesome. We've had it where they don't really touch it early in the season. So it just seems to be a good winter food for them that they don't see a lot of around here. Nice shoot. Nice. Nice shooting. The, the property is 350 acres. It's inside of the floodway, we call it. It's for flood control out of the Boot Hill of Missouri. And uh, so on the west side is the main floodway ditch that's for flood control for this area and the areas north of here. We've got about 80 acres of corn and the rest of the property is in the WRP program. WRP is a wetland restoration program and this property was put into that program years ago before we owned it. It's set aside for wildlife. We can't modify it, we can't farm it, we can't do anything. We have to leave it for the wildlife. Well, we pump it up if we don't get the rain in October, and then we'll leave the water there until end of April, 1st of May. We'll go in and drain the water off so that we can plant our designated areas with some type of food source. We prefer corn. Uh, some years we've done beans, some years we've done Japanese millet, and, uh, and then we'll put it right back in the will flood it again. So it's the whole property is set aside for wildlife. Nice. Look at that. That's cool. That's about as good as it gets right there. Oh. Got it like. Woo-wee. <clears throat> Better than that. I'm getting a picture of that old Whitey's gonna get upset. What are you doing? No, I'm trying to fix my phone. I'm trying to get a shot here. You know, we're just like playing like a teenager on your phone. I'm trying to tweet. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> nice shoot. Gonna peg away at this limit. That's awesome. This straps are filling up. You know, you you have to respect a well-trained retriever and the person that trains that dog for what they put into that dog. Uh, one of the parts of the job is, is the dogs, and I really enjoy training and working with the dogs daily throughout the year. I mean, it's not just a 60-day hunting season. I mean, it's an everyday thing, and. And I love that part of it, of, of working with the dogs and getting the satisfaction of seeing them work and hearing guys brag on them. It's like my kid, you know, and I, I just love that part of it. Good boy. He's worked his tail off today. Good dog. For what they have here at Full Contact, as far as the time and effort that they put into a hunt club, duck club that they have, the same amount has gone into Kyle's dogs, what he has done to these dogs. I can't give enough credit to, to the dogs that we hunted over the last few days. They went on 150, 200 yard retrieves, going underwater, plucking their head into water. There, there's ice out here, cold water. 
come back with a duck in their face and a smile as well. Come on, boys. I shoot. I had a great day. Shot, uh, what did we get, a seven man limit? Just about a seven man limit. Um, we could stick it out, but it's time. Everybody's getting hungry. Sun's starting to go down a little bit. It's getting a little cold. There's a lot of birds dumping into the corn, and uh, we're going to give them a rest and wear them out tomorrow. So it's a wrap. The dog's tired, we're tired and hungry. Time to head back to the lodge. To keep up with all the hunting action, check us out on the web. Season nine of Drake's Migration Nation is powered by Hydra Trek. Powerful, rugged, amphibious vehicles. Rio Ammunition, share the experience. Higdon Outdoors, get real. Boss Drives, take charge. Realtree, family, friends, and the outdoors. And by Drake Waterfowl Systems, innovators in waterfowl hunting. Woohoo! That was awesome. First two of the morning. That's a heck of a dog right there. While we were on our hunt down here at Full Contact, we experienced some great dog work from Kyle Boyd. But I think what is not explained in some of the hunt is what actually Kyle does for us and what he does for Mr. Freeman here. Kyle is, without a doubt, the biggest asset to this duck club. He, he was up before any of us. He, he got things ready. He made sure that the dogs were taken care of on top of we clean ducks. But when we're back in the blind, he's separating ducks. He's letting, you know, you shot this, you shot that. Hey, Greg. That was very good. Ah, nice shot, Greg. Crows it. Yeah, it was. Nice. Crows it. Uh, Kyle got out to work dogs. He got out to rearrange decoys. We had ice. He broke ice off decoys. Kyle is the reason this duck club is what it is. Hey, this job is a, is a huge blessing for me as an outdoorsman because I get to spend every day in the outdoors, but I also get to do something different every day. I mean, one day I'm duck hunting, and the next day I'm training a horse, the next day I'm planting food plots in Nashville, pumping water over here. It's, it's just, it's something different every day. I, I appreciate Mr. Freeman and, and this job and the, the lifestyle that it gives me with, with being outdoors and, and being around people and, and giving people a, a time that they would enjoy the outdoors. I just really appreciate this job and, and everything that goes into it. Our water levels can vary overnight, so a permanent blind like that had to be 10, 12 foot off the water, but with, you need the dog to be right there with you too. Uh, I think it's important that they have their own place where they, they're not knocking over your guns, they're not jumping in your lap, and we just decided we're gonna put the dog box under where we shoot from. Another thing by having a specific dog box it, that they're in, they're out of the wind, we can put a heating pad in the bottom of it, but they're kind of out of the wind, out of, they're definitely out of the weather. I feel like it helps the dog be more comfortable throughout the day. Everybody's pretty amazed at, at the dog set up and, uh, and how the dogs just, it's routine for them, uh, but everybody's impressed with 
what the dogs will kennel right down in a hole and then they'll go out the front and then they'll come back up and and so everybody really enjoys watching the dog. It's a big part of the hunt for us is the dog work. This hunt was without a doubt one of the greatest experiences I've ever had as a waterfowler. But I, I can honestly say in the back of my head that I didn't like this hunt. I didn't want to come down here. I didn't want to meet new people. I didn't want to see how hard Kyle works. I didn't want to see the beautiful lodge. I didn't want to see thousands and thousands and thousands of ducks. And I didn't want to bring my friend Scott down here. And I didn't want to ride in the hydro treks. I didn't want to get my truck stuck on a muddy road. I didn't want to shoot a lot of ducks. I didn't want to sleep in a bed, but it didn't sleep in a bed because I was going to go out and shoot ducks the next day. I didn't want to do all of those things because I knew at one point I was going to have to leave one of the coolest places I've ever hunted in the Migration Nation. Man, those guys had a really good time. The Full Contact Duck Club is an amazing place, and it was really cool to hear Kyle explain how the management of one piece of property can benefit the surrounding properties. Big thanks out to Bill Freeman for allowing Craig to have us down to the Full Contact Duck Club. Last I heard, Todd Copley was dragged home kicking and screaming to his region of the Migration Nation.